to submit. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. You love your mercy today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm going to call this the voice of the Lamb. Say that, the voice of the Lamb. The voice of the Lamb. You turn that heat down. Yeah, all the way. Hallelujah. I want you to go to John chapter 3, verse 34 to 35. John chapter 3, verse 34 and uh, 35. We're going to call this the voice of the Lamb. And Jesus here was talking to uh, leadership. In verse 34 he says, For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. You say amen. Amen. Now watch this. Go to Mark chapter 1 and verse 3. John said this to, he said, he said, prepare the way of the Lord and make straight paths for the Lord to travel. Now we know John, John came preaching repentance and he was the forerunner to Jesus, right? He was the one that would come before, that would proclaim the Messiah, that, the one that would, uh, amen. Amen. And so when he, when, he, when he come, John said in Mark chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Make straight paths for the Lord to travel. Say that, make straight paths for the Lord to travel. Make straight paths right there means preparing the heart, okay? Say that, preparing the heart. Okay, and we're going to get into something here. I'm just going to, I'm going to start digging into this real quick. And I'm going to read out of a different translation here in these next verses. If you want to follow along, make notes, and then go look that up later. I might tell you to stop, but I want to kind of get a flow going here and get into this message and see what the Holy Ghost has for us here today. In Passion Translation, in verse 3, in Mark, Mark 1, 3, he said, He is a thunderous voice of one who shouts in the wilderness. Prepare your hearts for the com- coming of the Lord Yahweh and clear a straight path inside your hearts for Him. Okay, now prophecy, there's a prophecy here in Isaiah 43, if you want to write that down, Malachi 3, 1, Hosea 10, 12, I'm only going to read, it, read one of these, I'm not going to go to each one, okay? But Hosea 10 and 12, he said, seek the Lord till he shall come, and when you, pl- or, and reign, and, and until he shall come and reign righteousness upon you. Seek the Lord till he shall come and reign righteousness upon you. We understand he was talking about, he was preparing the way. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. There's no other way to enter in. You must be born again and born of the Spirit. We understand that, but we understand that this this is going to go a little deeper, okay, than just, hey, prepare the way for Jesus, okay, even though it is what he's talking about there, okay. But he says this right here. He says, seek the Lord till he shall come and reign righteousness upon you. I'm going to go to Mark chapter 1 and verse 3 real quick in my King James. Because I want, to, I want to read something about fallow ground. I think that's where it's at. Anyway, you know where he talks about break up the fallowed ground? You ever hear that? Break up the fallowed ground. You know, anybody, anybody ever done any gardening? Anything like that? Any of you? You understand, though, that there's a process to it, don't you? You understand that you go out. There's, it's tough when you first go out, especially if you break new ground. Yeah. There's a tough process to it when you go out there to till that ground and to get that ground ready just so you can put the seed in so it can produce and do what it was created to do. The soil was already created to produce what you put in it, what you plant or what gets planted in it either way, right? But that, that fallowed ground, that, 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 that's hard ground, untilled ground is what that is. That's why he said break up the fallowed ground. That's why when Jesus comes, you've got to understand something. From the book of Malachi, from the last voice from heaven, till, Jesus, or till, till John the Baptist came and there was another voice from heaven, that was 430 years. 
There was nothing, no voice from heaven. The last time he said, Malachi told him, he said, prepare the way, make straight paths for the Lord, prepare your hearts and get ready for the coming of the Lord. For he shall come. This next time though, it ain't going to be, a, it's going to be the prophet, but it's going to be the Messiah the next time. It's going to be the Lord himself from heaven this time. So you need to prepare a way and make ready for your, make, make ready your heart to be able to receive him. Amen. So when you plow ground, it's to break up hard ground so that it can receive seed. Amen. And I know, I, know, I know we're all born again Christians and we're all new creations in Christ. But I'm going to tell you something. You've got to work at keeping your heart right. You've got to work at keeping things out of your heart. Now, if you, if you go to, uh, to till a natural garden, you're going to see that, that the weeds grow up no matter what. I don't care what that, the weed will grow up through a pavement. It'll grow up through asphalt. It'll find a way. Because it's, its desire is to live. But you have to continue, t- continually walk and you have to continually clean that thing out and keep it right, keep it prepared and all that. So we're talking, yes, amen. So we're talking about, so Hosea 10, 12 and BBE, he said this, put in the seed of righteousness, get in your grain, listen, get your grain in mercy, let your unplowed earth be turned up. For it is time to make search for the Lord till he comes and send righteousness on you like rain. No, make search of the Lord till He comes. What's He talking about? Unprepared ground. What do you think I'm plowing? He said, if you take to the plow, looking back, He said, you're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. What do you think we're doing as preachers? What do you think I've been doing here for two years? A year and a half. I've been plowing and 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 planting and watering and planting and watering and plowing and plowing. New earth. A lot of times you get saved, you don't hear some of these things. And you start hearing something about teaching on 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 tithes or on offerings. You never heard it. You've been religionized all your life. I don't care if you're born again or not. Something inside you, the Spirit of God, can cannot do nothing but bear witness to truth but your mind's telling you everything against it like man these preachers after money no we ain't either we after your heart there's a difference honey we're not after your money I'm after your heart you understand that but I'm after your heart to be in the right place you understand that if I can get your money in the right place I can get your heart in the right place let me help you with something (laughs) where your treasure is there your heart will be also I'm just shifting it for you because I'm trying to help you understand something Right? Yeah, you know, the preacher said this. He said, if I can ever get their money in the right place, I can get their heart in the right place. Amen. Amen. You, whatever you're spending it on, wherever that's going, that's, where you, that's, that's what you love, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm just telling you, so plowing, plowing that ground, he said, let, let your unplowed earth be turned up. I'm going somewhere with this. For it is time to make search of the Lord till he comes and send righteousness, amen, on you like rain. You know, you know Pastor Ron, uh, he, he had brought back to... Our memory and what a revelation, man! Man, I tell you, you know, there's some of us that we got the seed in the ground, but God can't rain on it until well, Adam, Adam, when he had he 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 planted the garden, the seed was already in the earth, but there was no man to till it, there was no man to manage it. Okay, now until there was a man that could manage it, there was not going to be no rain or nothing that would make the seed produce what it was meant to produce, right? As we grow as a church and as we come up, see that what we're doing, what God's doing, He's adding to it. But you know what? He's only going to release to us and it can only rain on the seed that we're capable of managing Amen. and stewarding. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. No, make search of the Lord till He comes. Unprepared ground. Revelations 2 and 14. He's talking about the doctrine of Balaam, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm going to go on past this. And I'm going to go to John chapter 14 and verse Two. Hallelujah. Any of you blessed today? Amen. John chapter 14 and verse 2. He says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's why he said, When I go, don't worry. I'm going to come back. I'm going to send the comfort of you and that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. So we're, 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 we're connecting something here. That's why he said, what he say? Pray the, our Father which art in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to, I want to share, I want to stop right there for just a moment. I want to share a testimony with you, okay? Last night we, I was looking on the, the, the internet thing and, and I seen this picture of this young man that you all know the testimony during the corona, when a lot of people were shut down and stuff, a friend of mine chose, I wasn't pastor of a church at that time, 
So it really wasn't my call as a lead pastor to, to open or close or whatever. But I did step out and start the church in that year, year 2020, okay? And he held a meeting, and I was evangelizing. I was preaching, giving testimonies to different churches at the time, preaching in the jails. Of course, the jails shut down. But I go up there, and he said, hey, do you want to do you want to come in and... Um, and pre, are you sure you want to? He said, my denomination's coming down on me. They're mad at me because I won't shut down. He said, but I told him I'm not shutting his doors. I'm not doing it. I said, well, brother, I'm called to preach. I said, you, you open that pulpit. It's your pulpit, but if you open it up to them, I'm going to preach. I don't care what they say. I just really don't. You know, and at that time, I was a little bit more dogmatic than I am now, but I just didn't care. You know, I wasn't trying to play tough. I just, God called me to preach. He didn't call me to back up. He called me to preach. Amen. Right? So anyway, we went through the meeting, and that message that I had that morning was manifesting the kingdom. And so I start preaching on manifesting the kingdom. Called altar call. There's hundred and something people there. You know, there was the, the place was it was pretty good size. Anyway, hundred something people there probably. They come up with this young man in a wheelchair. I told you all the testimony. We laid hands. We 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 ministered to him. I ministered to him. He ends up you know getting over into faith. Anointing's on him. Jesus, you know. Anyway, get a picture of him last night. He's working. He, amen. He's in college, or not college, but he's in he's in technical school. He graduated high school. He's got his life back. No longer in a wheelchair. He's running. He's he's, amen, amen. Jesus has restored him, restored his life, right? And it's okay to relive those testimonies to give God glory and to to realize that you were there as a vessel, but but God did something in that place, right? But he said this. He said. Pray that thy, thy kingdom will come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, thy will on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That's God's will. Amen. Amen. So right here he says this. He says, I go to prepare a place for you in my, house, in my father's house are many mansions. What's many mansions there? What's many dwelling places? It's, it's a lot of us look at mansion right there in that sense and you think of a big mansion and you think of a big, you know, most of you, right? We get that, well, a mini mansion, there's a mansion being built, that, you know, that this is, you know, and it could, could be possibly that, but, but you start thinking of this, this building. But he said, in my father's house are many, many dwelling places, many rooms, many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to go and I'm going to prepare you a place. I'm going to be the way, I'm going to be the truth, I'm going to be the way into this. Now I'm going to give you the keys. I'm going to give you the entry. I'm going to give you everything that you need. And you'll have all of it that you want. My, my will is to reveal it to you. The Father's will is to reveal to you His kingdom. To reveal to you Himself. But it's up to you, right? You've got a part to play. If you're hungry for God, then go after Him. If you're not and you're satisfied with this world, then well, you get satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I want more. I, you know, amen. You should, you should want more of Him. More of Him. Amen. So, okay, Passion Translation. Listen to this, John chapter 14, 19. Soon I will leave this world, and they will see me no longer, but you will see me because I will live again. Now watch this. And you will come alive too. See, that's why he told them, he said, it's important, you don't understand, it's important that I pay this price, because if I don't, then you, you can't live. But when I pay this price, when I come alive, don't worry, you're going to come alive too. You know, we say that we're resurrected in Christ. You know, I was crucified with Him, and now, nevertheless, I live. We confess those things. Nevertheless, I live, yet not, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in you. So His resurrection was your resurrection. When He was raised to life, you were raised to life with Him. Amen. I go away, I'm going to send the comforter to you, and where I am, I'm going to bring you there. A lot of us are waiting on the by and by. You're waiting on the release from the body, but you don't understand it, but you're sitting there now. He's giving you the interest way now. He said, you're seated with him now. I'm not waiting on, uh, when I step out of the body, I'm just stepping into his glory. I'm stepping in, amen? Now, I've not received the, 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 amen, the new body yet, but what I'm saying is, is I'm already a new creation, one with him. He that is in Christ is one spirit with him. One with him. Seated with him. As he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are you in this world. So what's this? I will come alive and then you will come alive too. Verse 20 says, So when that day comes, you will know that I am living in the Father and that you are living or one with me. For I will be living in you. Amen. Amen. 
Now watch this. John chapter 14, verse 22 and 23. Let's go down to 22. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest thyself to us and not to the world? Watch this. Jesus said, Jesus answered, said unto him, If you will love me, if a man love me, he will keep my words. My Father will love him, and we will come to him. We will make our home in him. So if, if, if you love me, you'll keep my words. And then watch this. But I want to read this, this Passion Translation to you. Listen to this. One of the disciples named Judas, not Iscariot, said, Lord, why is it that you will reveal your identity to us and not to everyone? That's why I want to stop right there for just a second. He said, why is it that you will you'll reveal your identity to us, but you won't reveal it to everyone? You know, when, he, when, when Peter came back, I think it was Peter, and, and he says, who does, who does men say that I am? What are they saying? Well, some say you're a lie, some say you're this, some say you're that. He said, well, that's good. Who do you, who do you say that I am? That's what's important. Who do you? Well, you're the Christ. He said, well, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed this to you. Jesus replied, listen to this in the Passion Translation, in verse 23. Now, King James people will probably get mad at me, but here. Jesus replied, listen to this, loving me empowers you to obey my word. Let me read that again. Jesus replied, Loving me empowers you to obey my word. And my Father will love you so deeply that, you will, that he, we will come to you and make you our dwelling place. Let me read that again. This is good stuff. I don't, I don't know why y'all ain't excited like that. You realize the creator of heaven and earth was wanting to, he's possessing you? Like, like, like all knowledge, all wisdom he possesses, like all, everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness is found in Christ Jesus, in the anointed one, and his anointing that dwells within us and possesses us. And my Father will love you so deeply that, you, that we will come to you and make you our dwelling place. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 29, he says, Seek God with all your heart. Say that. Seek God with all my heart. A lot of people never get to this place. They live loose Christianity. They, they, they live, they live you gotta, you got to pull them, prime them, pump them up, and, and beg them. Not you guys. When you get this, when you seek me, he said, with all your heart, then you shall find me. Then you'll find me. Seek God with all your heart. Listen to this, the, this commentary. I'm going to read this to you. I usually don't do this, but this was in my notes. And the Lord took me back. He said, I want you to open up your notebooks that you've been writing for years. I've got notebooks upon notebooks of messages and all these things. I ain't preached a lot of it. He said, go back to where you were. Go back to these notebooks. And I got in there last night and I started opening them up. And I was like, whoa. I could feel they were anointed as I would read them. I could feel my spirit come to life. Come on, amen. I knew they were anointed keys and words that God had given me. A lot of them I never, never preached, never even got into it. So I said, I'm going to get back into it. Listen to this. The heart is to be established with grace. Our grace, our hearts will, be, will, will become good ground by His new creating grace. And that the good seed of the word may produce in our lives those good words and works which are through Jesus Christ to the praise and glory of God the Father. Now watch this. Now we're, you know, he's talking about preparing the hearts and keeping your heart. Listen, I want to help you with something What hardens the heart. When Pharaoh, I want to say this, when Pharaoh began to, to when, when Moses would come to him and God said he would harden his heart, but what happened before God did that? He responded and said no. 
when, when, when the man of God, when, 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 the anointed, when, when Moses came to him and said, let my people go, here's what's going on. And he, as soon as he disobeyed, as soon as he did that, his heart hardened. Every time he came to him and he said no, his heart began to harden. Same thing in your Christian walk with the Holy Ghost that he that is led by the Spirit of God is the Son of God. When you start to get into a place and you start to pull back, you start to pull, I'm just saying in any area of your life, in Christ, well I can do that but I can't do that. As soon as you start to pull back, your heart will start to get hard. You'll start to get unresponsive to the Word of God. You'll no longer be receiving the Word of God like you used to. Why? Because there was some right, somewhere right there that God said you need to obey. You've got to go back to that place, correct that, repent, obey what God has said to you, and then you open your heart back up. And I mean, you can tell too, you can tell when you ain't got love like you should have for your brothers, when you ain't got love. If you want to cultivate a good heart, a clean heart, pray for your enemies. Let me help you with something here. Pray for your enemies. Bless those that curse you and do good to those that despitefully use you. You want to be an overcomer? Then just start doing what the Word of God says. You want to be, a, you want to be more than a conqueror? Hey, you want to do it? I'm going to pray for you. Praise God. I'm going to uphold you in prayer. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Praise God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What does that mean? Humble in spirit. Humility is the way up in the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Humility, humble spirit means to be humble and totally dependent upon God for everything. That's what biblical humility is. What do you think we're trying to do when we teach you these things at an early stage? Why? Because we're putting a foundation into you to, to obey God, to be humble in your spirit, and to learn to obey and to trust God with everything that you have. That's biblical humility. That's the place where your heart stays pure. That's the place where your heart stays clean. That's the place where the heart stays good ground, where seed can be planted and watered, and God can start to do something in you. And if He can do it in you, then He can do it through you. Are you hearing me today? Matthew chapter 5 and 3 says, The poor in spirit is the realm of heaven's kingdom. The poor in spirit... Humble in spirit is the realm of God's kingdom. Kingdom minded. Kingdom mindset. Meekness. Jesus said, or Jesus is saying, when you claim nothing is yours, everything will be given to you. Are you hearing me? <laughs> I had this wrote in here. Meekness. You write it down. Jesus is saying, when you claim nothing is yours, everything will be given to you. When you, the only way to get into this is to repent. Believe that Jesus is the Christ. Confess Him and turn in an opposite direction. Except you die, you cannot live. If you do not let go of what you're trying to hold on to, you'll never receive life. A lot of us want to hold on to something. We'll never receive life. You'll never be born again until you die. Now watch this. In James chapter 2 and verse 12 and 13. Can y'all handle just a little bit more? Not long. Just a couple more verses here. And then we're going to eat. So we must both speak and act in every respect like those who are destined to be tried by the perfect law of liberty. And listen to this. And remember that judgment is merciless for the one who judges others. Without mercy. Let me read that again. I know I'm reading the Passion Translation. This. You can go back, study it, study it, read it. You King James, whatever you prefer. Study it out in Strong's Concordance. Okay. Passion Translation is good. But I, my, me, prefer, I, I study my, my, my main Bible's King James. I read it. I study it. I study in the Strong's, but I use other translations. I'm not ignorant to that fact. Amen. Amen. But my foundational Bible is the King James. Yeah. I'm just telling you. I'm, not, I'm just telling you what I do. Okay? You got your own walk, your own relationship. So we must speak and act in every respect like those who are destined to be tried by the perfect law of liberty. And remember that judgment is merciless for the one who judges others without mercy. Now watch this. So, 
By showing mercy, you take dominion over judgment. Let me say that again. So by showing mercy, you take dominion over judgment. Forgive and it shall, you shall be forgiven. When you learn to do and obey what Christ has said, what Jesus has said, and what He taught, you'll learn to conquer. You'll learn to keep your heart good ground. Amen. One more scripture here. Matthew chapter 5, 8. I'm going to read the Passion again. Because that's what I've got here as I studied it. So I want to say, What bliss you experience when your heart is pure, for then your eyes will open to see more and more of God. You know, the blessed are the poor, poor, the poor, poor, or not the poor, but the, the, the pure in heart shall see God. And a lot of people stop right there. Well, I'm born again. Well, what about your walk with God? What about right now? What about where you're at? These things have to be cultivated. You have to respond. You have, that's why we worship. That's why we come together corporately. That's why we study to show ourselves approved. And these are why we do these things. Why? To keep these real. To keep Him real to us. To keep our hearts right. To keep those things out that's not right. And that takes work. That takes you coming in. Amen. That takes you in partnership in this. Not just, hey, God's done everything. No, God's did it, but you got a part to play. you got to keep your heart pure. If you'll learn to come the right way and stop jumping at everybody, start, stop condemning everybody, and you'll learn to, you'll learn, you want to conquer those that, that, what do he say? Pray for those that what? Despitefully use you and persecute you. Next time you get persecuted, you know what? Go out there and just say, I mean sincerely, just start praying for them. Just start praying for them. Those that curse you, just bless them. I, I, you know, just just bless them. Just don't don't worry about it. Hey, hey, you know what? Sincerely, I mean, get to a sincere place where you really do forgive them. Not so you can throw hot coals on their on on their head, but just so you could say, you know what? I, I just forgive them. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna let them go. I, I can't I can't afford to I can't afford to, to to hinder my relationship with God. And that's why he said this. He said, "What bliss you experience when your heart is pure? For then your eyes will be open." To see more and more of God. That's why he said he prayed that prayer. And I'm going to pray this prayer in Ephesians. He said, Lord, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. What? In the knowledge of you. That the eyes of our heart, our understanding, would be flooded with revelation light. That we may know you. Amen. Amen. That, amen. That, that, so, so give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. In what? In the knowledge of you. If you study that out, that, that my heart may be flooded with revelation light. That I may, that I may know you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. You'll walk in a place of victory right there where nothing will touch you. Where nobody can touch you. Perfect love, he said, casts out fear. Fear has torment. So if I'm fearing in any way, I'm talking about unnatural fear. I'm not talking about a healthy fear of God. An unnatural fear, maybe I need to check my love walk. If I'm in fear or something of somebody, then I need to check, well, am I loving them? Am I praying for them? Why am I in fear? Perfect love, mature love, he said, mature, say that, mature love, Mature love casts out those things, casts out fear. There's no fear in that. That's why Jesus, could, when he hung on the cross, he could say, you know what? Guess what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's why when Stephen was being stoned, he was so focused on heaven. He was so in tune with Jesus. He could see into the Spirit and see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And he was so focused. He didn't care what they did. He was so in tune here that nothing they did or nothing they... And he was physically dying. I mean, they was throwing rocks at him. You understand? Anybody had a rock thrown at him? It's not, it wasn't a pleasant thing to go through. They stoned him. You understand that? And when they did, he's still so focused and so in the spirit that he still looked up and he said, lay not this sin to their charge. <laughs> Lord, lay, lay not this sin to their... He kept his heart clean no matter what. He kept his heart clean even while they was killing him. He kept his heart right on focus with Jesus, man. Praise God. This body's just a temple. Praise God. Hey, man, this is just a vessel. It's just a tent. I'm going to put it off one day anyway. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to keep my heart right. I'm going to keep my spirit in tune with God. I'm going to keep my fire burning. I'm going to keep a blaze for Him. I'm going to keep my heart pure. Praise God. I'm not going to let nobody affect me. I'm just going to forgive you. I didn't say I was going to run around with you. I said I was going to forgive you. Understand that. I didn't say I was going to hang out and have sip tea with you and sip, sip tea with you. You know what I'm saying? But I, I said 
I'm going to forgive you. And I said, I'm going to keep on going. You know, I'm going to shake it off and keep on going. Right? Shake them all, keep on going. I didn't say go hang out with them. See, sometimes we get caught up in that thing. Well, we, we got to go around. No, we don't. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. We, we, we got a boat to captain. We, we're captain in a boat. We, 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 we on a, we on the front line. We're, 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 we're going somewhere. Some get on. Let me help you, church. Some will get on. Some will get off. Some what never really on anyway. They just here talking. You understand that? But they come, gonna come, and they gonna stay, and we gonna get together, and we gonna be a team, and we gonna be a body, and God's gonna pour out His Spirit, praise God, upon this church and upon you, and He's gonna start raising everybody up to their places where we can be one mind, one accord, one vision, one body, and we can go and we can accomplish something for the for the kingdom of our God. Amen. It ain't a one man show; it's a team effort. I just got the position to preach. That's my job to preach. That's my calling. I preach. I didn't ask for it. I surrendered to it. I didn't run around and say, I'm going to be a preacher and go to theological school and all that. Nothing wrong with that. You should go further yourself to study to show yourself approved. I didn't do none of that. I ran from it. God said, you're going to preach. I said, no, I ain't either. I can't stand in front of people. I've stood in front of them and locked up like that. I stood up in front of a whole school in third grade. I got up there and we were singing Ice Ice Baby. It's a true story. Am I, hey, and, and man, look here. Wait, hold on, no, hold on. Listen, listen, listen to me. So we're in the living room, and we're in his house, and we're 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 dancing. I, I mean, I thought you thought I was vanilla ice reincarnated. <laughs> you know, I'm serious. I didn't have the hair like that because you know what I mean. My hair didn't do that. But what I'm saying, I you would have thought I was him reincarnated. Really, I thought it in my mind. And I'm in his living room, man. We are we are hippest things in the school, man. We already we already we already got Grammys. I'm sitting. I'm standing in his living room. And we already got golden platinum records on the wall, and we ain't even stepped on the stage yet. <laughs> so it come time we practice. Everything's good, and we get on the stage. And it's time, man. The whole school's there. Like 600, 700 kids in this whole auditorium. He's standing on one side. I'm standing on the other. We're like this right here. Let me get down here real quick. So we're down here. It's a true story, too. This is just to show you. So, so he's standing over here. I'm standing over here. I'm like, yeah, we got it, okay? Like this. All of a sudden, the curtain comes up. The song's playing. I ain't got no move in none of my body. I don't even think my toe would move. It was like I was glued to the ground. I was so, I was struck with fear. He was, too. He didn't get away. He didn't dance or nothing. I said, I was, I was baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Grab your guns and listen or something like that. And, and sure enough, they did stop it. They did. They, they felt bad for us, and they shut the music off, you know. And finally, we got out of there. Man, I thought, I'm never going back to school ever again. <laughs> Thank God it was on a Friday and mom would kick your butt. If you're going, you're going to school. Mom right there, she'd make you going to school, boy. You know what I mean? Thank God it was on Friday, though. Man, because I had to wait all the way till Monday to go back. Man, I was the most embarrassed. And I, I mean, I wanted to crawl under the school. You understand? But I realized then I was not destined for platinum records. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But in my mind, but in my mind, I thought, you know what? I'm here, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm already there. I'm already, I'm already a star, man. Everybody in the world knows me. And I ain't, I ain't stepped on stage yet. You know, but that shows you how you imagine things and dream it up and all that. Thank God it didn't happen. Thank God I wasn't vanilla ice. But what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying. So we, so we get in. So, so I know, and I've been up in front of classes, and I couldn't speak. A lot of people didn't know that I could talk to anybody. I could, I could, I had a good personality, you know, up to me. I mean, I could talk to anybody on the street, you know, no, no stranger. But if you got me up there and I had to be put on the spot, I would lock up, literally. It was fear. Fear. I couldn't speak. I can't tell you why. I just couldn't. And 
I remember the first time I got out of prison, and like I said, it wasn't nowhere in, the, nowhere in there about preaching. None of my goals, none of that. It wasn't even a... It wasn't even a and and, and the, the pastor calls me one day, and I'm at a church, and, and uh, you know, serving and doing the best I can. I'm working at a construction company. I'm up on a walkboard. He calls me and says, Hey, Brother Derek, where you at? I'm bringing it to a close right here. This is good stuff, though. But he said, It's going to help some of you. And... Uh, he said, uh, hey, you know, we're having an association meeting uh, this Saturday or next Saturday, he said, uh, or the, whatever, this Saturday or two Saturdays ahead or whatever. And he said, uh, "He said, you know, I've been thinking about you instantly. I started getting sick to my stomach. I was like, oh, God, and I started doing this. I started shaking. True story. I started shaking on the board. My legs started shaking. I thought, oh, God, he's fixing to ask me to speak or something. And I'm a Christian at this time. I'm born again. Man, I got on the thing and I sat down like this and I knew what he was going to say. He said, I thought about you. I was in prayer. And he said, we do a devotional and we let somebody get up. He said, it's an association meeting. We have all the pastors and churches come from all over our association and meet once a year. And they, they have this meeting. And he said, I thought about you doing a devotional. I said, oh my God. I about puked. I was so sick to my stomach. I was like, there's no way. Oh, I can't do it. I was like, well, what, what I got? What, what, can I call you back? I said, I'm up on a walkboard right now. I'm about to fall. You know, I didn't tell him that, but I was about to pass out. I was so scared. I was started shaking to my core, brother, because I had this fear of getting up in front of people. And, and, then, and then I thought, well, I went through this battle. And I thought, well, I hate the devil. And I love Jesus. And I said, I, I'm afraid to get up there. I said, but if I just get up there and I stand up there and I say, Jesus Christ is my Lord, and I go sit down, I've won a victory. Yes. And I, that's how I settled this. Listen to me. This is how God pushed me into this. He pulled me into this place, into my calling, what I was chosen for. And, 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 and finally I called the pastor back. I said, listen, pastor. I said, you just want me to do, obey God? I mean, what do you want me to do? Obey the Holy Ghost? He said, yeah, just obey God. I said, well, sir, can I be honest with you? I said, listen, if I get up there and just say Jesus is Lord and sit down, I said, that might be all I get, but I'm going to have victory. I'm going to walk away and declare my Lord. I can do that in front of everybody. I can do that one. He said, well, that's fine, Brother Derek. You, you, that's fine. I go through this long process. God gives me a message. I'm like, there's no way. How am I getting a message? You know, I'm not called to preach. And, and all of a sudden he shifts, you know, we get up there and, 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 and get in there and sure enough, there's 13 pastors. They're dressed to the T, look like Sharp Brothers, man, on the front row. That didn't help none. They counted, there was 13 of them. Whole church was packed out. Man, I prayed with everything. I mean, I prayed with the, my pastor. I prayed with this one. I prayed in the parking lot. I got down on my knees there. I got in this pastor's office. Had them all lay hands on me. I said, my God. You know, they all the way through, they're all praying for me and laying hands on me and stuff. And I needed help. Yeah. So I get up there, and she sits here, and I thought, I just settled it. I said, okay. On the way there, I said, I'm going to get up there, and, and I'm going to open my Bible, and, uh, and, and I'm going to, if, if it's God, he'll help me. If it ain't, it won't. Guess what the message was? Backsliding Israel in a church full of pre with 13 pastors on the front row. Do the math. Backsliding Israel. Return, you backsliding heifer. I said, Phew. I said, well. And back in them days, I'd get down and do the shotgun prayers. You know, we'd get down behind the altar, and, and we'd start shotgunning. Lord, da, 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 pray and help me, Lord, and all this stuff. Nothing wrong with that. I needed help. So I thought, well, I'll get up there, and if I say Jesus, Lord, or whatever. So I get up there, and I get down on my knees. I'm fixing clothes. I get down on my knees, and I begin to pray with everything that's within me. And when I come up, it was like I felt the hand of God on me. When I come up, I preached from one side to the other side to the other side. I opened the Bible. I read from the book exactly what God said out of Jeremiah. Yeah. Told every one of them, repent. And I preached that message, brother. And I got done. I sat down. I looked over there, and the pastors looked at me like that. Looked like he could run through me. I was like, look, you put me up here. And before he got me up here, guess what he said? 
He said, he said, Brother Derek just got out of prison. He walked up here from the halfway house, you know, down here. Just walked into the church one day. I didn't ask them to put me up here. He did that. Yes. God did that. I didn't ask that. I would have never, I wouldn't even got up there to clean it. Not that I wouldn't clean. I'm just saying that's how I, I didn't think nothing. I don't want to do nothing. No. Uh -uh. And he said this right before he got me up, Brother Chris. He said, this, he said here's Brother Derek. He said, we're going to throw him in the lines then like Daniel. I thought, oh, God. This is before he let me up there. I thought, my God, what's happening here? The whole church was, there was two or three hundred people in this church. I mean, I know that ain't a lot to some churches, but it was a lot to me. Yeah. And I had never been up there behind a pulpit like that. But God put me in the place. Amen. Amen. To reveal me. I didn't ask for it. I didn't fight for it. I was just there. And man, we preach. And I remember the deacon, a friend of mine, he gets up there. I didn't, I didn't know anything about an altar call. I just shut the book. I'm done. I get down. I'm finished. I thought, man, I feel like I'm victorious. So I was victorious. Yeah. It wasn't the ice ice baby. Yeah. <laughs> Standing there. I didn't lock up. Because I had God with me. Amen. And he was helping me. Amen. He had anointed me. I wasn't anointed to do the world stuff. And I couldn't do it. That, that deacon gets up off his clothes right now. I hope y'all getting blessed off this. I hope it's helping some of you though. That's, that's what I hope. God's way is the best way. If you're chosen for something, you, you, God's going God's to God's position you. You understand that. In the right timing. What he's more concerned about is developing you, though, so when the position does come, when he does position you, you're prepared. You're prepared. When the positioning happens, he's going to reveal you. He ain't nothing, you ain't nothing going to... It's going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? God shuts... God opens a door. It's open. God shuts it. It's shut. You see, a lot of people, they're trying to make their own name, their own way. We're trying to... You know, it's so easy to get caught up in that. Look here, I'm wanting heaven's applause. That's it. I'm going to obey what God says to do. If he wants to do this, then he can do this. If he wants to add this, he can add this. We'll, we'll just, we just, we just. But he gets up there and he said, and everybody didn't come running to the altar either. It was quiet. <laughs> and he said, that's the most powerful thing I've ever heard. <laughs> That's what the deacon of this church said. He said, it's the most powerful thing I've ever heard. He said, if any of y'all need to come to the altar, he said, come on up here now. And nobody responded. <laughs> but I got victory. They was afraid to after that. Because I was just like the donkey, you know. I didn't know, I didn't know enough not to be, you know what I mean. I just knew to get up there and obey God and speak. I didn't get all politically correct and all, you know, with the ten-point sermon and all that. I just preached with everything that was in me under the anointing. Amen. But if God's called you, God's called you. Amen. Just like Moses. Moses couldn't speak either. He had to have Aaron. He couldn't even trust God all the way. So he had to have Aaron to help him. God will use, listen to me. Yeah, he stuttered and everything. So, so God, God chooses the weak things of the world to confound and confuse the wise. Don't let people offend you and pull you away from what God's got for you. Don't let people do that to you. Don't let people get you offended and because they said this or they said that. Let me help you with something. You run to this church, that church, this church. Listen, just just listen. You got people everywhere you go. Don't let people just get to a place where you're not going to let nobody affect you no more. And you're going to seek after him and you're going to keep your hearts prepared. You're going to keep your heart right. Listen, <laughs> you're going to have every chance to be offended. Just don't take it. Don't let nobody pull you away from what God's got for you. Are you hearing me today, church? Stand up with me right here. Listen, those of you online, pray you've been blessed. Listen, keep your hearts pure. Amen. Seek God with all your heart. Amen. Get us a song and uh, tell me when you're off. Yeah.